How do we increase flow rates? All advancements since the CHT relate to larger melt zones. We have the original volcano here, and you'll see there's things like the super volcano, etc. Since the CHT was released, we now have this little melt zone extender so that we can use the original CHT, or knockoff in my case, with a volcano like nozzle. Our problem is that Longer nozzles result in less precise extrusion, which means really small models. You might end up with blobs here and there. And I know Clipper compensates for that, but not completely. The more Clipper has to compensate, the less exact we're going to get. So instead, I want to improve this part right here. A normal nozzle melts from the sides. Here we have this. Oops. We have heat being drawn in from the metal surrounding the nozzle. And that results in the softest plastic being on the outside and the hardest plastic in the middle. And somewhere in between is more like clay or silly putty. If we want to improve our melt rates, we have to be able to heat that core more efficiently. It doesn't do any good to make the liquidy part more liquidy. Essentially what you have is sort of this metal shell heating up plastic, which then heats up more plastic. And by the time you get to the middle, you're just plastic being heated by plastic being heated by plastic. I know it's kind of like layers, like an onion or an ogre. A CHT nozzle works around this by creating kind of this triad of holes and a spike right in the middle to smash straight into this solid plastic right in the core. It splits into these holes, and then you can efficiently melt from all around in all of those. But really what the big part is, is initially smashing the most solid, coldest part of the filament into the nozzle. Stuff in here is now usually pretty liquidy or somewhere in between. It kind of gets all mixed up in there. But you have this hot spike melting from the middle, hence core heater technology. Our problem comes when you try to jam this solid piece of filament right into that spike. I don't know if you've ever tried to poke a pen through a piece of plastic, but it's not very easy, not even one of these little things. Even if it's a very sharp spike, it doesn't tend to go very far. If you really want to demo, get just a, a safety pin and try to jam it straight through a piece of filament you'll see it doesn't really do all that much. That's why there isn't much difference between these nozzles right here, which is kind of a barely chamfered edge, and a proper CHT nozzle, a proper Bontech CHT nozzle. It's sort of like trying to push a knife through butter, a hot knife through butter. As you try to cut through, there's a certain point at which you can't melt the butter fast enough as the knife goes through. You can compensate by heating the knife up more and more and more and more, but at some point you start to singe the butter on your way down while still leaving a whole bunch of hard butter on the sides. So what we need to do instead is work from the outside in enough that we can soften the filament right down in this middle part so that when it hits this, instead of being in a solid state, it's more in that Play-Doh-y state. My first idea was to kind of narrow down the filament path in one dimension as it goes down, sort of make it into this little slit. Oops. So at the top end, it would be a circle, but at the bottom end, it would be this wide oval. The problem is how do you manufacture that? It's not the easiest thing to make, and that'd be one funky looking drill bit. My second idea, and ultimately the one I went with, was to start still with that circular shape up top, but to end in more of a cross. The surface area would still be the same, but overall, this would have much more circumference. 
So the idea was to use a jeweler's saw to cut these slots here and just kind of angle it so that it doesn't cut into the edges of the circle and to use one of these tapered bits, a CNC bit, to cut the slot so it starts skinny at the top, or starts thick at the top, and works its way into kind of a point. And then these compensate that way. So my first attempt didn't go so well. I slipped up, cut the hole way off to the side because my drill press isn't very high quality. I cut it way too short, but was so distracted I didn't even pay attention as I worked through it. And I sanded the ends down too much and I ended up having to cut the slots a couple different times in odd ways to get it to work. But ultimately, when I combined it with this, because it didn't fit in the volcano end otherwise, It was a little too short with just these two to fit in the volcano hot end, so I had to combine it with that. But just with that, with that extra five millimeters, which is the same length as that little heat break right there, it increased flow by about 30% for me, which is a lot more than one of these does on their own for me. But obviously we're not going to stop there because this was the little mistake piece we're going to make a proper bit. Here's what the prototype looks like after I cut it and tested it a few times. You can see some of the carbon marks on the outsides. It doesn't look beautiful by any means, but you can see in the upcoming tests how it performs. You'll see one side has a hole in it and the other side has kind of an X. And if you extrude filament straight through the nozzle, it comes out looking like an X. Anyway, here are the results. Here's the new. You can see how much more smooth it is. It's got some rippling, but that's my printer's fault. That's not the nozzle. That's just because I have very high accelerations and I haven't reduced tolerances in a few places that I need to still. Just haven't gotten into it. Let's put them side by side. You 
you can see that's a pretty significant increase. It's still printing just fine where this one has outright failed. And it's only tightened up where this one is just kind of peeling off. Here's a side-by-side -side of the test prints. CHT on the left, CHT plus EHT on the right. I've measured what I consider to be no warping, maximum acceptable warping, and the point of total failure, marked by the red lines. I'm pretty conservative on these because a little warping on the filament can be enough to catch on the nozzle and end an otherwise fine print. The final results. The new EHT spacer adds 50% warp-free flow to the hot end, translating to up to a 33% reduction in print time. It improves flow by 44% at what I consider the max acceptable warping, translating to up to a 31% reduction in print time. And finally, at total failure, it adds 26% flow, but you can't print like that, so it doesn't really reduce print time. I hope you enjoyed this. There are more ways to improve this for sure. For example, the square corners inside the nozzle can be chamfered down, Hole size could be optimized, manufacturing could be improved, the width of the slots could be optimized, and the number of slots could be optimized. I'll follow this video up with a few more tests and a more in-depth video of how to make these things. But until then, keep experimenting!